G'day viewers, today we have been rostered on these two GP38-2s on the Peninsula Corridor and we're going to do our FRA daily inspection and we're going to do the startup as per the operator's manual. So driving a chain, they might be running when you get them but you always do an inspection. In this case these two locomotives are shut down so we're going to go and have a look at them. So you first up you do your ground inspection, it's just a bit of a walk around the locomotive so you can see that the pilot is clear of the rails, has to be at least three inches clear. Um, you need to check your brake shoes and these ones being in game will all be fine. You're also looking for leaks, uh, you're looking for an adequate amount of fuel and in this particular case this locomotive appears to have zero so okay it fails that one. But anyway we'll just pretend that's right. Uh, we've got brake shoes there, brake shoes. We go in and have a look at all of our connections. We've got the multiple unit control cable, that's the red one, uh, connecting the locomotives together. Underneath the coupler there, you can see the train brake pipe and you can see the unit control cables as well. No, I don't want to give up. Thank you very much. Very helpful game. Love your work. Anyway, heading further along, we'll continue with our inspection looking at things. We're also looking for anything that might be loose or broken. Here's another one with a lack of fuel. And we're looking at all of our brake shoes, we continue going around. We look at this pilot and make sure it's clear of the tracks as well, which it is. They have to be three inches clear of the track, up to six. All right, continuing along. Let's just uh, rummage through here. We'll just take the rest of that as red. Okay, so we've finished our ground inspection. So now we'll head off into the lead cab for a start. First thing we want to make sure of is that our handbrake is applied, and it is. And come into the cab now. Good day, mate. How are you? And I'm going to sit in the chair because I want to stop the game complaining about do you want to give up control? Because I don't. So this train's already got some air. Let's just check how our controls are set before we start up. So dynamic brakes off, the throttle's in idle, the reverser is out, the independent is fully applied and the, this is in full service but we really want it in suppression. Um, the reason we want it in suppression rather than full service is because it will stop the safety devices doing anything strange. Okay so the next thing we need to do is make sure that our isolation switch is in start stop isolate and it is. We want to put our headlight switch into controlling unit with unit coupled at the long hood end because we're the leading loco and the other ones at the other end. Now in our fuse box here, let's just pop on our torch so we can see. We want to put in the main breaker, you want to inspect our fuses, they look okay, and the ground relay is also fine. Now we want to turn on everything that's in the black area. These are all mandatory to operate the locomotive and all the control systems for the engine and the generator etc. We also want to turn on whatever devices and other things we need, so our radio, lights, headlights, automatic drain timer, that's just the air tank timer, we don't need heaters, it's California. Our utilities on, warning devices and electronic devices, and we can now close this door. We're almost ready to start up. The other one we want to do is put on the control and fuel pump, we want to turn that on but we want to leave the other switches here, so engine run and the generator field, they want to stay off. Okay, now at this point, you would normally hop up and head out of the cab and you would inspect everything in your engine bays, um, the fluid levels for the engine itself, water, oil, any other lubrication points, um, fuel, and you'd want to check your compressor and its drive belts, and you'd want to check all of the other mechanical couplings make sure that there's nothing strange anywhere make sure there's nothing leaking but the reality is you can't actually do that in this particular locomotive because the game won't let you so what we're going to do is we're going to prime the fuel system and hold this here for five seconds in reality you'd be looking at the fuel filters that's enough. In reality, you'd be looking at the fuel filters, which are up here, but you can't actually see them. In a real loco, you would also set this lever here to a particular position suitable for starting.
Now we're starting up the engine now. At this point, you'd do a whole lot of other checks because all of these inactive push buttons and things around the place, you'd be wanting to look for water leak indicators, over and under pressure indicators, oil pressure, all those sorts of nice things. Okay, so let's just come back into the cab now that we've started up. So we now have a running engine. So first things first, should have done this before I sat down. Let's just put this into run. And we need to make sure there's no lights on up there. So there's no indicators of anything that's wrong. Let's put on our number lights and we can put on our platform lights. We can also come back down here. We notice our inter-train device is alive. Our radio should be alive too. Um, PCS is not lit up, which is good. We can turn on our step lights and our gauge lights. And we can put on our front headlight just to dim to indicate that we're here. And we can put the engine run on. Now, I'm not going to put the generator on just yet because there's a few more things I want to be able to do. So we can put our reverser in. Now, note we've still only got one locomotive at this point running. Unless it starts the other one automatically. I'm actually not sure whether the game does that or not. In reality, that wouldn't happen. So we put this into freight and we're going to release our main brakes. Who knows why the HUD's going, hey, wiper valve, 0%. We're leaving our independent where it is, which is fully applied. And we check our MU2A valve, lead or dead, which is correct, because we are the lead locomotive. Alright, so we can leave this the way it is for the moment. That's all we want to do in here. Now what we want to do is go down to the other cab. And we want to start that one up. And then we will get back to our inspection. But we need our locomotives running to do some of the inspections, so we start them up. Now you'd go through all of the same activities on this one, the fluids and the like, that we did on the other one. Now, I'm not going to jump in the chair here. Now, in this locomotive, we don't want any of these switches turned on because in the trailing loco, you don't do that. What we will check, though, we want to make sure the brake is cut out and it's in handle off, which is fine, and the independent brake is released, which means the brakes in this locomotive are being controlled by the other one. Now, this is lead or dead, but that's not right. We want to do trail 6 or 26 or trail 24, so I'm just going to run it into our trail 24 because it's the trailing locomotive. That sets the brakes up. Now let's get ready to start up. So we inspect our fuses, they're fine. And we want to turn on everything that's in the black section again. And we're going to start this locomotive up as well. Now in here we do not need a radio, we don't, we can have our light switches on, we don't need headlights, the auto drain timer should be on because that's draining water out of the compressed air tanks, utilities yes, warning devices no and electronic devices no. We're in start and we are a single unit or an intermediate unit. So we want to be controlled from another unit, that one, control from another unit coupled at either end. There we go, that's fine. Now, we can turn this light off. We're ready to go out now and start this locomotive as well. No, I don't want to give up the service. Thank you very much. Alright, now let's crack open this latch. And oh, it's just cracked open by itself. Good. Alright, let's prime this one. and start her up. Sounds promising. On a real locomotive you need to hold them in start until they get oil pressure because the oil pressure protection will shut the engine down otherwise. Alright, so we've got both locomotives running now so let's just head back to our lead loco. Let's go through the path. Close these again. Not that it really matters that much. We could just leave them open. Okay, lovely. 
And that one's up too. Okay. Now we're going to go back to our lead locomotive. And we've built up air pressure. Now we know our brakes are working now, so what we can go around here... Actually, we won't take the handbrake off just yet, because we have to do the FRA inspection now. So, first thing to do is... We want to drop some sand. And we're going to check all of our things. So let's just go through the checklist. So yeah, so the first thing we do... I was right. The first thing we want to do is drop sand. And we want to make sure that we can actually see the sand outside. It's a little bit hard to do in the game because you have to come out here and be pressing the sand button. Now I've got a rail driver, so I actually can do that. So you should see sand falling down there. I think it's just too dark because normally you actually do. But anyway, let's pop back in the cab. So we've done our sand. That's fine. Um, the sanders should operate in the, in the lead is where you really want them. Now, the air gauges register within 3 PSI of reality. We don't have a way to test that, so we won't. Locomotive cab is free of stumbling hazards. Looks pretty good to me. No traction motors have been cut out. Now, if there is cut out controls, they'll be up there. This loco doesn't have any, so that's fine. Uh, the cab seats are secured. They're nice and comfy, these ones. And the dynamic brakes are operative. Now, you can't really check this in the game, but... Um, there is a test mode on these locomotives, but you can't do it in the game. Now, at least one headlight bulb must be operational on each end of the consist. So let's go out and have a look. So, there we go. Headlights. Now, I'll take the other end as red because they're not that controllable in the game. So, next thing we need to check is that uh, both dish lights are operational. And when you're starting out, they have to both work. Now, they should already both be on. But let's just pop out there. No, they're actually not. All right, so I would have expected them to start up with the bell. So where are our ditch lights? So here we go. I'm going to come down here and bright and ditch lights. So that's fine. Let's pop out again. There they are. They're both working fine. And do they flash? No, these ones don't flash. Okay. Some do, some don't. Uh, the horn and bell both work. We've already tested that. The cab illuminates from the overhead lighting, which it certainly appears to work, so that's fine. The speed indicator functions accurately. Now, of course, in a daily inspection, you actually can't do this until you move. So what they say is that as soon as you start moving, if the speed indicator doesn't work, that's deemed a failure. And the windows provide a clear view. Well, they're not bad. Barely clean from a railway point of view. There you go. Even cleaner now. They're gone. And the toilet facility is sanitary and operational. Well, we'll have to take that as red because you can't see it in the game. Now, uh, we need to look at the calibration sticker on the head end unit, which is this thing here. But you can't in the game, so that's fine because you need to make sure it's been calibrated recently. Now, as we were going out before, we've already kind of looked at these, but let's go and have a look. We have to inspect our walkways and our safety chains to make sure that they're all clear. They are clear, they're there, they're functional, they're operational. You can see the walkway up this side is clear and the walkway down this side is clear, so that's fine. Uh, what else do we have to do? Handrails, handholds, steps, ladders, safety chains and guards, etc. are all secure and not bent and not damaged, so that's fine. They all are. Uh, the electrical and rotating equipment guards are in place. Well, they'll be inside the engine bay and we can't see very much in there, so we'll just take that as red. And the diesel engine has no apparent exhaust, oil, water or fuel leaks. And the handbrake is operational. All right, so we're going to get to the next part of our work here. So we're almost ready to actually do some stuff with the locomotive. The other things on the inspection sheet here are the fuel tank is not leaking, and this is a proper FRA sheet, by the way. Uh, there's no defects or cracks in broken parts, such as locomotive trucks, wheels, gear cases, and drive gears. So they're the kinds of things that we looked at before. The brake cylinder piston travel is sufficient to provide brake shoe clearance when the brakes are released, so that in our inspection before, we would have made sure that the brake shoes were clear of the wheels and that the brake shoes are secure and approximately in line with the tread of the wheels. So you'd, you'd actually manually check every brake block, block to make sure they're, they're okay. 
um, checking the snow plow and or pilot that all of the cables and hoses are clear of the couplers we checked that before and the unused cables are stowed well they're all in use so that's fine and there's no physical damage to the ATC or ATCS receiver bars on the locomotive so equipped that's the antenna that's underneath the front of the locomotive so the next thing we need to do and we're still in neutral here we're going to we've released this brake we've maintained our independent brake so what we want to do now is make sure that the brakes actually work but to do that I'm also going to want to make sure the compressor is working properly so I deliberately don't have the generator field on so we won't go anywhere so we'll speed the locomotive up and you can hear it speeding up so we'll step through the notches notch 8, there we go and then we'll step back down again so doing that we're making sure that we have control of the diesel ok next step we're going to do is we will start the gen field we will go into forwards and we will apply power, keeping the brake on. Because we want to see that it starts to power up. And we can see here that we are producing power. And this is testing two things, that the engine produces power and that the brakes are satisfactory. So that's fine, so we'll throttle back to idle. And now we do the same thing in reverse. and the same works again. Now you can't test the dynamics this way because the dynamics only work when you're moving. Alright, everything else seems to be pretty happy. So everything else seems to be pretty happy. So what we can do now, in reality we'd get our little mate over here to do this, but we're going to get up and we're going to come over here and we're going to release this handbrake. Done. Close our door. Because all right, we've got the independent brake holders at the moment, so the last test we need to do is just to make sure the emergency air brake valve works. Come on, let me look down there. I want to look down there. There we go. That should have released all of the air pressure from the reservoirs and the brake line, and it has, and it's applied the brakes fully. So that's fine. We can go and close that now. Come back to the chair, and that... 3017 you'll notice the PCS light is on we have to put the hand into emergency we have to verify that our reverser is in the neutral position and it is and that our throttle is in idle which it is and now we have to sit here for a minute just waiting for a timer to elapse so at about 3120 or so we'll be ready to go and then we'll be able to release it out of emergency now, some trains want you to put it into suppression, some trains want you to put it into full service, and some trains want you to put it into emergency for the duration of the minute. So, research your locomotive and do whatever's appropriate for yours. Um, some of them make you wait the full minute, some of them don't. So, we're not far off now, we should be able to release shortly. there's 3120 that should be about the right time so let's try and release and the PCS light indeed has gone out and our brake pressure started to go up now what we can do now is to make the pump run faster is just put the engine into notch one because it'll ramp the diesel up a little bit and it runs the compressor a bit harder all right then we're finally ready to actually do our job so we've done all our tests we've done all our checks we've got our locos up and running so let's do this Breaks off into forward. And away we go. And that, folks, is the reality of railways. 
that will happen at the start of pretty much every shift. I'm not going to take you through the rest of the activity here because there's another video for that. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you've got any questions about locomotive startup then um, or inspection, please give me a yell. Now, note that I did this by following the GP38's handbook for the locomotive-specific details, and I used a FRA-approved checklist to do all of the other checks. So normally I'd tick all those things off and sign them, and we'd be ready to go, and we'd enter that into the locomotive book. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye now. I welcome any and all feedback. Feel free to comment on the video. Constructive criticism is welcome, especially if I've got something wrong. I stream every Sunday morning starting at 8.30am, and I also do ad hoc streams from time to time during the week. Please subscribe, and click notify to avoid missing out. Subscribing helps me by helping me see what content is good, and how it helps the channel grow, or doesn't as the case may be.